Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time on the resource tree. And if you're thinking, eh, that can't be too interesting for me, well, maybe you are kind of familiar how it looks like, but do you know what timelines are, what the included files are, the extensions, how you can actually customize all that stuff, and how, for example, um, well, how the objects, let's say, for example, your sprites are indexed. Well, stay tuned to find out more. This is Wannabindi, I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every two days a video. So let's get right into the good stuff. First of all, for example, if I run this thing, then you can see a few strange things. For example, this is one object and it draws two sprites which you can actually check out here are you still already loaded okay so you see those two are being drawn on the screen and here if we zoom in a little bit we are drawing this cactus and then we're drawing the cactus once again also with a zero and if you're thinking what the hell does that even work yep it does work so how is that actually possible well your resource tree is having indexes as well and they're kind of hidden but well you can actually exploit them if you like so for example this is the index of zero then you have one two three four and that you you have for your sprites for your sounds and all that stuff so basically maybe for example you do an arrow and you just go for zero here and for one here and we just uh, reload the game I said one this stuff actually works too because there's no difference between let's say a, a number or the image of the stripe basically this is the same that's basically um, if you just know a little bit how let's say how um, hyperlinks work basically they're just like one big number but because well people don't uh, well memorize numbers but names that's why you have like namespaces and this is just the same system or almost the same so basically that is one neat way just to recognize and sometimes stuff works and you're just wondering how the hell is that supposed to be possible it is so sometimes for example if your first sprite is gonna be loaded maybe you have a well some conflict here and then it's just grabbing the first image that it has so that is actually one thing so um, some people actually said I guess it was what who was it pixel Pope and he just said for every well, sprite and all those categories you should make like a default thing which is just empty like for example here a transparent one so because sometimes the first one gets grabbed just by accident so just keep that in mind but then if you want to know that just go into his um, video and I will just link that in the description another thing for example you want to customize your well, resource tree. then you go just under well files preferences and then you go under where are your resource tree and then you can change for example your colors and then I don't know if you like you can just completely make that an ugly duckling and that is what we are gonna do let's see uh, what do we want do, 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 do. and then we apply and boom we have a very ugly looking user interface and then for example if you're completely messed up you, you want to restore defaults go restore defaults and bam everything is back to normal that is actually a nice thing so let's get right into the stuff here i just wanted to show you a few things which are just concerning the resource tree first of all what well, you have your room and then your rooms are here so this is the level where everything is actually taking place and on that you place your objects which are just always in instances but for example if you want to check out let's say a sprite and you just wanted to have it like an, a what a background prop but you, you just want your sprite then you just do it like this where are you and then you just go on your assets layer bam and then for example you can play on this little uh, play button and then it already animates so you can actually check out how this looks like in your game and you can actually leave it like this because it's not an object it's just while well, your sprite planted because while well, objects are more resource intense and maybe you don't want that you just want to put some some stuff which is just animating 
as a background prop so it looks more beautiful but this is one way to do and that is for example how well those uh, sprites are utilized as well they, they, they are not just completely bound only to objects they can be planted like that too and the another thing is well tile sets if you don't know what that is basically this is just like uh, square pieces and they are well putting in the tile set layer then for example if we let's say uh, don't show this one this is just like you just paint stuff and it's just let's say well cosmetic and that's basically it that is what a tile set is and then of course they can be animated but that is a little bit advanced well sounds are sounds i guess there's no uh, expanding here path but there is a thing for example if i run the game once again i have this little red dude here bound to a path and then he will just go on that path back and forth so this is for example how you can set up a very easy enemy which is just going a one path and you don't want to bother with i don't know some movement you just want to do that well this is a way how you can set up a very basic enemy which is just running along this path and it's just doing nothing else that could be a, for example a setup and then the next thing scripts well scripts are basically code pieces which can be reused in your object so for example let's say some stuff you want to use let's say the ease function but you want to use it in the spikes and maybe on this dude and some other well, objects then it makes sense to have a, a script which is just being well, run in the object once or twice or permanently for example let's say inputs so you have an external script which is just running inside one of your objects so that is a good thing to have the next thing well shaders shaders I'm is a big topic to well, enhance your game for example one thing where there's a lot of confusion a lot of people just want to have let's say these kind of glowing things in their games and they just wonder, let's say, for example, Heroes of Hammer Watch, just looking more beautiful with shaders. But what actually, what kind of shader is it? Well, it's a bloom shader. And if you have heard about bloom shaders, well, that stuff is not being discussed a lot because it's quite complicated, but it really, really enhances your game. So if you are interested in that, I will do a video in the well, upcoming weeks because that is pretty heavy stuff. But once you get the hang of it, you can create some mind-blowingly beautiful effects with that one. But that, of course, goes a little bit to the, your resources because, well, it's more taxing on your PC or, let's say, rather, on your graphics card. And the next part, well, fonts should be self-explanatory. Your fonts you want to use in your game. And then, well, timelines. Timelines are basically like... Uh, little events that you can trigger so for example if you are on one timeline then something will happen then you jump to another timeline and something else so you can utilize them pretty sweetly for uh let's say cutscenes and stuff so that is what timers are good for i will do a video on that too but i guess in the future so the next thing are the objects well the things which just interact and do some stuff well in the games and which are pretty well how can you say that they have a lot of functionalities and they are global what do i mean by global well, if you are using other well languages let's say like java a lot of things are not accessible from one object cannot just access another one so basically there are some restrictions concerning their well um, privacy and there for example in game maker well every object can grab another object and just control it if they like so there are like no real boundaries and that's why um, game maker studio is quite nice because you can do a lot of things with that but that comes with a cost because well every object is then not a lightweight thing it has like lots of things bound to it which are just running in the background with it so they take more of your uh, well, memory and that they want to change in the future update which i don't know when to do but um, they will well do some lightweight objects and they are pretty sweet for example for what well, bullet hell games where you have bazillions of those bullets and if they are like regular objects they just take too much memory so this is not very efficient and they want to fix it with that so congrats to yo yo if they well, pull that off the next thing now about the room i showed you notes well notes are basically just stuff you want to put in your game so let's, let's say for example you want to credit somebody inside your project file this is where you can 
do that. And included files, what is that? Basically, for example, all your sprites, your resources are here, but they are just bound to your game. But what if, for example, if you want to include some extra stuff which isn't directly tied to your game? Well, well then you can just well insert them here too. Let's say, I don't know, maybe some soundtracks or whatever, or I don't know, some other files, some video files or whatever. And then you can include them here and then they will be packaged as well into your what well, executable which you can do and build here the next thing is extensions well what are extensions they are things which are uh, well external to game maker studio so for example if you want to localize export let's say your whole thing as a video or load resources from the cloud which is as you can see not possible everything is local well, those extensions allow that. So basically, they are just advancing the whole um, Game Maker Studio program with other features which it doesn't have. And then those two ones, well, you can completely forget them because they're not too important. Um, for example, here you just well can change. What can you do here in the graphics? Well, you can do your texture pages. So I made a video on that, but. On that stuff well I will make another video hopefully that was of interest to you and you found some new stuff well that was pretty much it have a good one one up indie